why Noah's Ark will never be found. For more than a century, people have sought the Old Testament vessel that survived the biblical deluge. Archaeologists say it's a fool's errand. Noah's Ark is among the best known and most captivating of all Old Testament stories. After creating humans, God became so displeased with them that he struck earth with an all-encompassing flood to wipe them out, with one noteworthy and seaworthy exception. The biblical patriarch and his family, accompanied by pairs of each of the planet's animals, who rode out the deluge in an enormous wooden vessel. For people who accept the religious text as a historically accurate account of actual events, the hunt for archaeological evidence of the Ark is equally captivating, inspiring some intrepid faithful to comb the slopes of Armenia's empty Ararat and beyond for traces of the wooden vessel. In 1876, for example, British attorney and politician James Bryce climbed Mount Ararat, where biblical accounts say the Ark came to rest, and claimed a piece of wood that suits all the requirements of the case was in fact a piece of the vessel. More modern Ark discoveries take place on a regular basis. From an optometrist's report he'd seen it in a rock formation above the mountain in the 1940s to a claim evangelical pastors had found petrified wood on the peak in the early 2000s. But searches for the Ark draw everything from exasperation to disdain from academic archaeologists and biblical scholars. No legitimate archaeologist does this, says National Geographic explorer Jody Magnus, an archaeologist at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, of modern searches for evidence of Noah. Archaeology is not treasure hunting, she adds. It's not about finding a specific object. It's a science where we come up with research questions that we hope to answer by excavation. Stories of destructive floods and those who survive them predate the Hebrew Bible, the oldest parts of which are thought to have been written in the 8th century BC legends about a deluge that destroys civilization at the behest of a supernatural deity can be found in multiple Mesopotamian texts, from the Epic of Gilgamesh, which was written around the early 2nd millennium BC, to a recently deciphered Babylonian cuneiform tablet from about 1750 BC describing how the Ark was built. Could these flood myths be based in fact? There does seem to be geological evidence that there was a major flood in the Black Sea region about 7,500 years ago, says National Geographic explorer Eric Klein, an archaeologist at George Washington University. But scientists disagree on the extent of that event, just as historians of the era differ on whether writings about a deluge were inspired by real life. It seems likelier that floods were simply experienced in different places and at different times and that those events naturally made their way into the world's oral and written lore. Complicating the issue even further, scholars differ on the precise location of Noah's Ark according to the Hebrew Bible. In the book of Genesis, the Ark came to rest upon the mountains of Ararat, located in the ancient kingdom of Urartu, an area that now includes Armenia and parts of eastern Turkey and Iran, not the single iconic peak that bears its name today. There's no way we can determine where exactly in the ancient Near East it occurred, says Magnus. And both Klein and Magnus say that even if artifacts from the Ark have been or will be found, they could never be conclusively connected to historical events. We have no way of placing Noah if he really existed and the flood if there really was one in time and space, says Magnus. The only way you could determine that would be if you had an authentic ancient inscription. And even then, she points out, such an inscription could refer to another Noah or another flood. Please subscribe to the channel, like, share, and leave your comment in the comment section below.